Hello, everybody. Okay, um, the jury is still deliberating in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. And so I wanted to take 15 to 20 minutes to talk about his charges that he faces and what my predictions are. And I'll do another video after everything comes out. So first, I'll give you guys some background. Um, everybody knows about this case, so I'll make it real fast. What's up, Deborah? Um, this had to do with the Kenosha incident. Hona Girl, 96, what's up? Thanks for coming out. On August 25th, 2020, we had the unrest, the unrest in Kenosha. There was uh, the shooting of Jacob Blake, which I've already talked about. Completely justified shooting. And everyone was tripping out about that, which is complete nonsense. The dude was uh, t basically a family terrorist. Uh, police officers got the um, call that he was trying to kidnap children, basically. The lady's children. And he already had domestic violence. He already had a, um, an assault charge. As, as, for all intents and purposes, a sex assault charge. We already talked about that. I will leave a video right here if you're watching this video after it's been posted. Um, and I will connect to that Jacob Blake shooting. But he was a dirtbag. He was breaking the law. And he posed a threat. And he had a knife. And he was not listening to officers. He had already been tased. He had already hurt an officer. He was running into a car that had children in it with a knife. And he reached for the knife. And he got shot. Completely justified. Saw it on video. Yet everybody still freaked out. And everybody from politicians to um, the news media, oh, it was insane. It was pathetic. It was pathetic how they treated it. Um, nobody wants to see anybody die, but come on now. You cannot, um, you got to pick those children and those officers over Jacob Blake. So anyway, the city's burned. That's what it was. The city's burned for nothing. For what? Over... Jacob Blake nonsense. So anyway, during this, um, essentially a riot, this was a BLM riot. Don't let anybody tell you different. That's what this was. It was a BLM riot. Sorry. Can't deny it. BLM is a terrorist organization, if you ask me. And that's what happens when they riot. They were, we're going to burn down the city because of all this craziness. Oh, Drives me nuts. So, uh, Tiare, wine it. Thank you. Thank you. It's not easy to cover. This video will be demonetized, I'm sure, just like the last one was, but I want to do it because I want to cover it. Okay, so I'm three minutes in. I only got 18 minutes left. Okay, so, essentially, he was armed with an AR-15, and he is protecting these businesses. They asked for help. And two people end up getting killed. And another dude wounded. One of the individuals that was wounded was armed with a handgun. And if you just take 10 minutes to look into the backgrounds of these dudes, you'll see what kind of nonsense that was. So forget those guys, okay? They were burning the city. They were destroying everybody's property, vandalism, setting stuff on fire. Kyle Rittenhouse was actually cleaning up. He was actually covering up all the graffiti. He was washing stuff off. He was painting over it. Unreal. Dude was, had a medic bag, was providing help, a medical care for people. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. He's an idiot for going down there. He's an idiot. But guess what, folks? 17-year-old people are idiots. You were an idiot. I was an idiot. Everybody else was an idiot when they were 17. So I'm no better than Kyle Rittenhouse, but he's an idiot, okay? He shouldn't have been there putting his nose where it didn't belong. That does make me upset. Sick and tired of people acting, making all tantana that they're all big and bad, make big body, go down with their AR-15 and try to flex on some people, okay? That's dumb. That's stupid. Don't be that guy. I see enough of that. 
Too many people trying to be vigilantes, whatever. However, you can't exactly say that's what Kyle was doing. Kyle was asked for help to protect some car dealerships because guess what, folks? The police caved to the public pressure, all this crazy stuff. They didn't want the cities to burn. I get it. But someone didn't teach them criminal justice. Someone didn't teach them the broken window theory. Someone didn't teach these guys that you can't just let people do what they want to do. They abandoned the city. The people that you pay in Kenosha, Wisconsin, the people that you pay to protect, the people that you pay to uphold the law, they abandoned that area of the city. And so some dudes who have property within that area of the city that they abandoned said, no, I need help. I worked my entire life to build this business. You're not going to take this away from me. So he asked for help. And guess what? The dummy, okay, he's a dummy for doing it, but he's 17. We're all dummies. He volunteered. He had courage. It's a little like liquid courage, right? I mean, it shouldn't, it's, Everybody's got courage when they carry that weapon. One thing I talk about, I'll, I'll leave a link to the video right here. This will be my um, CPL, my concealed pistol license video about me going to get my concealed pistol license and I'll talk about how I feel about that. If you're watching this video later, I'll leave a link there. Uh, everybody gets a gun and they all of a sudden they feel like they can take on the world. And that's the wrong attitude. And that's, I think, what happened here. However... I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the timeline. I'm looking at what he did. And I got to say, I'm a little impressed. I'm a little impressed because my man handled himself pretty well. And accuracy, uh, he waited to the last moment. How much more last moment can you get before a dude bashes your head in with a skateboard, reaches for your gun, pulls out a gun, they were literally right there before he whap, whap. Short controlled burst. Like, I'm actually a little shocked. He must have been playing Call of Duty a lot. Uh, he had, like, really good trigger control. Uh, like, for my man to be getting attacked and him to keep the muzzle discipline and all this other stuff he had, in the midst of all that crazy stuff, I was a little impressed. So... Um, like, I got just, I'm just being, I just got to be transparent on that one. So, the bottom line is, uh, this all crazy stuff goes down. He fired four times at this dude, Rosenbaum. That dude died. Um, and then he fled the scene to a second location where he's being followed by a crowd of about a dozen people. He's thinking to himself, I shouldn't have come here. That's what he was thinking at that last moment. Um, he tripped and fell to the ground after being hit in the head. He fired twice at an un un unidentified man who jump kicked him. Others in the crowd approached him while he was still on the ground. Anthony Huber struck him in the shoulder with a skateboard and struggled for control of the rifle. Rittenhouse fired at Huber once, which killed him in the chest. And then when West Alice resident Gage Grosskreutz approached Rittenhouse and pointed a handgun at him, Rittenhouse shot Grosskreutz once in the right arm, severing his bicep muscle. Then he turns himself into Antioch police that very next day. Got extradited to Kenosha and charged as an adult with unlawful, unlawful possession of a firearm. Two counts of homicide. Two counts of reckless endangerment. A 19-year-old dude uh, named Dominic Black was arrested and charged with illegally supplying Rittenhouse's rifle. And a bunch of other people were charged. So, everyone's tripping out. James Lockman. Thank you, James. Appreciate you, man. Um, so, that's the background of this. All because the media said Jacob Blake was shot in the seven times from behind, unprovoked. That's crazy. That's just nonsense, okay? Unreal. Um, so, that's the background, all right? So now we're going to go to what he's charged with. My dude, count one. First degree reckless homicide, use of a dangerous weapon. So this is a felony charge. This is connected to the death of Joseph Rosenbaum. He's the first man that he shot. Um, 
A bystander video shows Rosenbaum chasing Rittenhouse through a parking lot and throwing a plastic bag at him. Rittenhouse flees behind a car. Rosenbaum follows. He was jumping this dude. Video introduced at the trial showed Rittenhouse wheeling around and firing as, Witten, as Rosenbaum chased him. Richie McGinnis, a reporter who was trailing Rittenhouse, testified that Rosenbaum lunged for Rittenhouse's gun. There you go. So, this is called reckless homicide. This is not intentional homicide. That's the difference. Intentional means you meant to kill him. Reckless means that you didn't care if he died. You did what you did with a reckless abandon. Um, prosecutors aren't alleging that he meant to kill him. They're alleging that he caused his death in circumstances showing an utter disregard for human life. Very similar to what they initially charged um, the, what's his name? Um, the whole thing has started all this. What's the officer? Forget his name. So it's very similar to that. And this, this, this charge is punishable up to 60 years in prison. There is a dangerous weapon modifier. The modifier carries an additional five years. So he's facing 65 years in that charge. My prediction on this charge, nonsense. Nonsense. This was not reckless. He intended on firing. He was simply trying to stop the threat. That's what my opinion on if this is if he's guilty of this or not. I don't think he's guilty of that. Now, my prediction, will he get um, convicted of this? No. So, so far, we're no and no. I think this one's gone. Count number two, first degree reckless endangering safety. Use of a dangerous weapon. This is a felony charge. It's connected to the Rosenbaum shooting, the same shooting. McGinnis told investigators he was in the line of fire when Rittenhouse shot Rosenbaum. So, this is saying he shot Rosenbaum, but there were people downrange, behind his target. That's a real thing. Police officers will get charged with this. Someone got charged with this during the Breonna Taylor case. So, um, this charge is punishable by 12 and a half years in prison. The weapons modifier carries an additional five years. It's because it's a, he's using a dangerous weapon. So, on this charge, I think this is nonsense. He should not be convicted of count two, the first degree reckless, recklessly endangering safety. I think that there is exceptions to the rule, what we call exemptions, um, what we call, this is what makes certain crimes justifiable. This is what makes a homicide to a justifiable homicide. And in this case, I do believe this will apply. He did not feel he had any other choice and he had to fire to stop the threat. So he stopped the threat. So you are not expected by law to keep safe the public over your own safety. You're allowed to actually protect yourself. So I don't think he, this, I think this is a bogus charge and my prediction is he will be found innocent on this charge as well. Um, Count three, first degree recklessly endangering safety, use of a dangerous weapon. This is the same exact charge, but this one is not related to Rosenbaum. On this one, the video shows an unknown man leaping at Rittenhouse and trying to kick him seconds before Anthony Huber moves his skateboard towards him. Rittenhouse appears to fire two rounds at the man, but apparently misses as the man runs away. So this one is the first charge that I think he has to be concerned about. I do not think that this is, I do not think he's guilty of this. Um, I think that this is also justifiable. It's the same idea. He basically was protecting himself in this moment. He was being jumped the same time that Huber moves his skateboard towards him. He fires two rounds at the other man, but he missed the other man. So he can't be guilty of this because he wasn't firing at the man. He wasn't firing in disregard of the man's safety. He was trying to stop Anthony Huber and this other dude, which adds, it's another factor. Even though he, this other dude, this um, unknown guy, 
even though he was not the one that was going to hit him with the skateboard, when you have someone going to hit you with a skateboard and someone going to hit you with something else and you fire at one of them to stop the threat, they're both endangering your life at that moment because if you focus on the one who doesn't have the skateboard and the one with the skateboard hits you, that's just as dangerous as you um, focusing on the dude with the skateboard and the dude you're not focusing on you hits you with his fist. Like it's the same idea because two are coming at the same time, it's justified. I don't think he's guilty of this, but I do think he has to um, worry about this. And I do think that if they feel, if the jury feels like they're going to have to get him on something, this would be one of the things they're going to get him on. Rittenhouse did a very, what I think is an awesome thing. And he chose the jury out of a hat, essentially. This is like a lottery for, for the jury. And it's crazy. Uh to do something like that. And that's how they did this jury. It doesn't get more fair than that. Pick them out of a hat. If they're eligible for jury duty, put them in the hat, we'll pick them out, essentially 12 of them. So I think that that's gonna be a crucial moment. So um, I really do think that's gonna be a crucial moment. Um, Okay, count number four. First degree intentional homicide use of a dangerous weapon. Uh, this charge is in Huber's death. A video shows Rittenhouse running down the street after shooting Rosenbaum when he falls to the street. Huber leaps at him and swings a skateboard at his head and neck and tries to grab Rittenhouse's gun before Rose, R Rittenhouse fires. The criminal complaint alleges Rittenhouse aimed the weapon at Huber. Here's the deal. Rittenhouse was chasing or. Er, Huber was chasing Rittenhouse. We have everything on video. So you can't play chicken or the egg game on this charge because you cannot say that Rittenhouse put himself in the situation to shoot Huber when Huber was chasing Rittenhouse. Because if you say Huber, when, which the defense tried to do, if you say that Huber only um, swings the skateboard at I'm sorry, that Huber swings the skateboard at Rittenhouse because Rittenhouse first pointed the gun at him. You are picking and choosing who you said started it. Because Rittenhouse didn't point the gun at Huber for no reason. Um, it shows him running down the street after shooting Rosenbaum. When he falls, Huber leaps at him and swings a skateboard at his head and neck and tries to grab Rittenhouse's gun. If he was worried, what's up, Kai? Hey, Lay. This is from Mana. Thank you, Mana. Mahalo's big guy. I appreciate you, little bro. Thank you so much. Um, if Huber was afraid that he was going to get shot, he could have turned around and walked the other way and left. He didn't have to chase Rittenhouse. So the person that was provoking the incident was Huber. So I think count four is completely nonsense. This is justifiable. There is exemptions here. And I do not think he'll be convicted on this count either. So we've gone through count one, two, three, and four. The first two, I think, are bogus charges, and he'll beat those. The third one, I think, is a bogus charge, but I think he has to have concern for it because the jury may decide if they want to get him on something, they get him on this. Um, true crime with Libby. The jury will decide, not us. You're right. And that's why this, this video is simply giving my ex-cop's perspective of the situation and explaining the count so that everybody knows what the counts are. Count four, um, I think, is bogus and he'll get off on. So, so far, only count three he's got to worry about. But intentional homicide means that he killed him and meant to. And it carries mandatory life and there's a weapons modifier that adds five years. Um, this is the first tricky one because this is the first um, time of any of these charges that a jury was given a second option. And so in this charge, which is the first degree intentional homicide, the jury was given the option of second degree intentional homicide and first degree reckless homicide in Huber's death. So I don't think it was a second degree intentional homicide either. Those are, it's almost the same elements. Um, 
and then first degree reckless homicide in Huber's death. And that is the same as count one that we talked about earlier that I thought was nonsense. And you have the justification that applies to this due to the situation that he was in. However, the second degree intentional homicide is punishable by up to 60 years. The first degree reckless homicide charge um, in this one, which is, this is talking about Huber's death. This matches the original charge in Rosenbaum's death. It would require jurors to decide that Rittenhouse caused Huber's death with an utter disregard for human life and is punishable of up to 60 years. I think it's literally the same thing as in Rosenbaum's death, so I don't think that's going to be an issue here. Uh, we go to count five. Attempted first-degree intentional homicide, use of a dangerous weapon. This is the charge that Rittenhouse um, is getting for shooting that Gage Gro Grosskreutz in the arm and severed his bicep. After he shot Huber and as Grosskreutz came toward him holding a pistol... The key right there, guys, this all goes away as soon as you say that last sentence, which is Grosskreutz came towards him holding a pistol. There's a difference between having a gun and coming towards someone with a gun. Furtive movements make all the difference. Um, Grosskreutz survived, only got shot in the bicep. And we have that on video. This is the one where you see Rittenhouse pointing his gun at Grosskreutz and firing a single round. One shot, folks. He didn't do a double tap. He didn't get crazy shot. One, the, the threat stopped. His trigger discipline was impressive for him being in a crazy situation where he's being chased. I know what it's like to run with a gun. I know what it's like to have to make decisions after you've just chased someone for a mile. And your brain is all crazy. Your, your little um, fine motor skills, you start losing those. And it becomes really hard to concentrate and make those decisions. He showed good discipline. The first degree intentional homicide charge carries a maximum sentence um, of 60 years. And there's a weapons modifier that adds five. In this one, the jury's also been given the option of considering second-degree intentional homicide and first-degree reckless endangerment charges. He may catch a first-degree reckless endangerment charge on this one. I think he's going to beat the attempted first-degree um, intentional homicide, but I think that and he, he will get... The, this charge will be dismissed or he will be found not guilty. However, I do think that he has an issue here with the first-degree reckless endangerment charges this one's not as strong as the first one that he has to deal with. I do think that he, it, it's something to think about though for the jurors. I think he's okay. So, so far I think he's guilt, He's not guilty on all charges, but I do think he has to worry about count three, the endangering safety, reckless endangering the safety, first degree reckless endangering safety use of dangerous weapon. He's got to worry about that on the jury. I think he's okay. But that's one I would be worried about. Um, now we're going to count six. Pos possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under 18. This was a complete nonsense charge. It's a, it's a confusing thing the way it's written in the law. And the judge already dismissed this on Monday. So he's no longer facing count six. So he's safe on that one. They're saying because he was armed with an AR style semi-automatic weapon, he was 17 years old. Um, Wisconsin law prohibits minors from possessing firearms except for hunting when supervised by an adult in target practice or instruction on the proper use of a dangerous weapon. And Rittenhouse's attorneys argued that another subsection of the law regarding short-barreled rifles provides grounds for dismissing the charge. That was important in this case because prosecutors argued that the defense was misreading the statute and Schroeder had earlier twice declined to dismiss that charge, but the judge also said that this statute did make it confusing, and after prosecutors conceded that the rifle was not short-barreled, Schroeder dismissed it. So essentially that applied to short-barreled rifles. He wasn't carrying a short-barreled rifle. Count seven, failure to comply with an emergency order from state or local government. Now, this is the first case that I think that I'm not sure of on this one. He was charged with being out on the streets after an 8 p.m. curfew imposed by the city, a minor offense that carries a fine of up to $200. The judge dismissed the charge during the trial, saying the prosecution didn't offer enough evidence to prove it. 
So he's safe on this charge. This would have been the one that I think he would have got hit on. However, it's just a fine of $200. So we don't have to worry about that one now. But I said all that to say he shouldn't have been out there. They said get, out of, get off the streets. The problem is if he didn't do it, then they burn those car lots. Those car lots are somebody's dream, somebody's uh, business, somebody's hard-earned, hard-saved money, and they were going to let it burn. And Minority Reporter says, if they charge Kyle with it, why didn't they, the attackers get charged with the same? That's a great point. You cannot charge Kyle with it if you're not going to charge all 20,000 people or whoever was down there doing those riots. Unfortunately, police department, listen, I back police officers. I always believe the police officer first until I see evidence against him, just like I do everyone else. But I'll give you my um, opinions on based on my experience, what I have seen and how these things play out, what certain excuses really mean when people say one thing, what they really mean, those kind of things, how cops um, address certain issues. I'll give you my perspective. So I support police officers. It's a hard job. I know what it is to be a police officer. I know what it is to make those tough decisions. I know what it is to ride that line every single night. You're the only one on the streets that can take someone's fourth amendment away. It's the most power you can possibly have. It's a stressful thing and it's hard to do and it's hard to do right. But I will say that occasionally people do things wrong. Police officers do wrong things. And we'll never stop that. It's just human nature. Can't get everybody perfect and there's not enough people in the world for us to get all perfect police departments. But they do pretty well. So the issue here is this. Here's my critique. Unfortunately, the police departments abandoned that area. That's their job. And they quit doing it. It wasn't just police officers making a decision not to do their job. The police department made announcements. The city made announcements that they were going to move back and this was going to be an area that people weren't allowed in. They retreated. You can, you can put a pretty bow on it, call it something else, but they abandoned the city. You can never abandon your city. You're the last line of defense. If you leave, there isn't any more law. How can you leave the area and then decide to impose a law that you yourself have abandoned? That's a double standard. Hold on, guys. We're not going to enforce the law in this area. We're going to back up. Let everybody burn it. But you, Kyle Rittenhouse, that's a crime we want to prosecute because we're scared about the city. We're scared about what BLM's going to say about us. Unfortunately, I feel like the police department, not the officers, they're following orders. They said back up. What, as a cop, are you going to say, you know what, I'm going to go in there by myself and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I got to do. Even though this department, they don't care about me. They don't care about me at all. They're telling me to back up. Nope. They were listening. Command says, hey guys, the higher ups are telling us we got to leave. So, everybody backed out. The thing about Kyle Rittenhouse, Kyle Rittenhouse, he didn't shoot someone protecting property. Although that will be the accusation. Kyle Rittenhouse's presence was there to protect property. Him standing there with the gun was protecting property. Kyle Rittenhouse didn't point a gun at someone for flipping a trailer over. Kyle Rittenhouse didn't point a gun at somebody for setting a fire. Kyle Rittenhouse shot someone who tried to hurt him. 
He just so happened that he had a gun with him. Placing yourself in a position of security, what we call presence, will deter a lot of things. And we all know it. Putting a police officer with his blue light on out in front of your, re- your business will dramatically decrease the chance that your business is robbed. So Kyle Rittenhouse stood out in front of those businesses. He was helping somebody. That's not use of force. When Kyle Rittenhouse was attacked, he stopped the threat. So you cannot give a private property versus human life argument. Because Kyle Rittenhouse didn't shoot because of private property. He was protecting his own human life. So that is my prediction for these cases. I think he's only got to worry about that one endangering case. I think that he is responsible for his bullets. And if they feel like he recklessly endangered the public with that weapon, he could be facing a felony charge of 12 and a half years with a weapons modifier of up to five. So I think best case scenario, all these charges are beaten. I think that the worst case scenario, he's facing this first degree reckless endangering safety. I think he should beat it, but you never know these days. So that's where I'm at, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd really appreciate you guys bringing um, comments in here and telling me what you think. I don't judge you for what you think. We all have opinions. I'm just giving mine. That's all it is, guys. And I still appreciate you guys for bringing topics in the chat. This is a place where we can talk about it. And this is a place where I can bring up these topics. I can assure you with almost 100% accuracy that this video will be demonetized for whatever reason. I'm not going to do any tags, no hashtags. I'm not going to put anything in the description on this one. We'll see what happens. Um, And then I'm going to give you guys a video after the verdict comes out and I'll tell you what I think. Am I worried? What is going to happen? I'm a little worried. We already saw. The cities burned because a a horrible person committing crimes against family members and children. Look up Jacob Blake or watch this video when I post this video. And they burned the city down. So if this kid who was just being an idiot shouldn't have been down there but defended his life. When he gets let off, yes, I think they're going to try to burn cities again. I don't, however, think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to be as bad as it typically was. And I think that this case helps. Dare I say, the moment they realized That you cannot just, because you wave the banner of BLM, destroy cities with reckless abandon and with no regard for the people that are protecting those places. And I, for one, think that it's about time. BLM has had its chance. We all knew they were going to fizzle out, but we got worried for a second. Talk about vigilanteism. How can you accuse a 17-year-old kid who was there for noble reasons of vigilanteism when you had thousands of people burning down a city in the name of vigilanteism? You, sir, have a double standard. And it is vividly apparent to all of us now. So I can't wait for the tide to shift. 
and for us to start moving on towards a better world instead of a worse one. We need more love in the world. We need more law. Let's not be burning things down. Have some respect for people. Quit playing a victim. Go build a business yourself. So that's my thoughts, guys. Thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate you. And I'm going to be doing a question and answer video probably this week where we do a question and answer. You guys can ask any questions that you want. That is if a bunch of stuff doesn't go down. I'm going to be doing a video on Colin Eldertz and Christopher Didi. I'm going to be doing the response of HPD to the ACLU in that Honowai Elementary School terroristic threatening drawing case. And I will be doing a Rittenhouse video. So depending on the crazy stuff that happens this week, we're going to do a question and answer video. So get your questions ready and um, anything you've ever wondered. My Patreon, they get their own question and answer. And they probably have asked the questions already that you're thinking. But since this is for public videos and you guys haven't really had the chance, I'm going to do question and answer videos. So make sure you come down and ask the questions that you have. All right, guys, I got three more minutes. I'm going to ask, answer some questions real quick. Um, quick question, Marcus G. What, when that lady was shot dead January 6th in the Capitol, should those who stormed the Capitol be charged with murder since she died while committing a crime with them? No. Because it comes down to intent, what she was trying to do. And we cannot prove that all those people can had intent to do what she was trying to do. That's what happens with mob mentality. There were people down at that riot in Kenosha, Wisconsin that night who didn't burn anything. But they were down there like, whoa, this is crazy. Follow the mob. I'm not going against the mob. That's how they're thinking, right? Have you ever been in uh, Honolulu City Lights Parade? Or you ever been at the Shell when, when had some crazy banger and there's, and there's tons of people? Uh, you ever been to Waikiki on Halloween, right? When the crowd's moving one way, it's intimidating going the other way. You're just walking with the crowd, just trying to be safe. That happened in Kenosha. There were people there who didn't do anything. Even with the people who stormed the Capitol. I promise you there were people there who didn't know that was going to go down. And so you can't... And then where do you delineate who that was? You know what I mean? So I, I don't think you can, but that's just off the top of the head. Um, Minority Reporter said, I noticed a lot of the writers are sex offenders. Anyone notice that? In this case, some got shot. Jacob Blake was, read up on it yourself. Don't take my word for it. Okay. Um, Daryl Clark, what's really on trial is the right to self-defend. If found guilty, what message is that sending? I agree. The only thing that clouds it is a lot of people think that someone died because he was protecting property. No, he was just down there protecting property. Aloha Powered says, what do you think about the judgment is being passed as possibly just appealing to the public's interest, bias, beliefs, and or perception? Very possible. I think that, that that's happened for the last year. For the last year, people got away with whatever they wanted because of the public perception. So yes, I think it's very possible the jury do, to do that. And he basically round-robined it. That's a, that jury pool was a lottery. Mob attacks. A car and um, and the car driver runs over. Oh, mob attacks a car. So this is sorry. Original BLO. One question: Why, when a mob attacks a car and the car driver runs over and kills someone while trying to escape the mob, gets charged with murder a lot of times? Why isn't it the mob charge? Exactly. Exactly. Here's the the problem with that is. If the man is still safe within his car, it wasn't reasonable for him to run somebody over. 
The same way that happened with the Chipotle case in Michigan where the girl was coming out with Chipotle and she got bumped and then people started getting crazy. She tried to back out. They wouldn't let her leave her van. She gets out of the car, points a gun. They backed up. She got in her car and pulled away. I don't even know what's going on with that case. I did a video about it. I'll post it here later when this video is posted. And I don't know what's going on with that one, but they charged her for pulling her weapon. And I think it was a good charge. Uh, I do think that she didn't need to pull it. She could have been in her car. Now, if they busted the window, that's a different story. So if that mob attacks a car, busts the window like they're going to pull him out, or he sees a gun, that's a different story. But just being inside your car is a safe place to be. You do have a duty to like wait until that danger presents itself. It has to be immediate and imminent danger. Immediate and imminent. Both of those need to be there. Uh, true crime with Libby. I appreciate your comment. It's, uh, she says, hmm, property destruction over human life. No, never property destruction over human life. But like I said, that's not what happened here. He was there to protect property, but then he was he shot to protect his life. You can kill one to save one. But the intent is never to kill, it's just to stop. Remember that, guys. Your intent is always to stop the threat. You shoot him until he stops. You don't shoot him and then shoot him again. Song Wu Hung. Thank you so much for the $10. I appreciate you in the super chat. Nate Fleming, man, Doug, if you got time to check out Jesse on everything YouTube, I think you're both on the same rhythm. Cool, I will. Remind me on, on the Patreon. FBI Pumpas, him being chased and threatened to be killed, opens fire and only hits his intended targets. They should hire him and train him in the ATF. Yo, a lot of people saying that. His trigger discipline was good. He had shots on target, except for he missed two on that one dude. That's why I think he's got to worry about that reckless endangering charge. So he shot at that dude and missed both of them. Uh, HRS 32 Breen. I don't know how to say that. I apologize. But it says, not only did he come at him with a pistol, he put his hands up in the air, prompting Rittenhouse to lower his muzzle, which, at which he appointed and began to draw the pistol, resulting in him getting shot. I agree. Debra, I'm sorry, cannot cash you. I'm 74 and retired. Mahalo to those that do help this brother. Thank you, Debra. Hey, listen, I do not expect that from you guys. I'm doing, I want to get in these conversations with you. I want to have these conversations and I appreciate all you for watching my video. This is, I don't, this is not, I'm not asking you guys for money. So Debra, don't feel bad. I, it's an honor that you showed up. It's an honor that you spend your time with me here on the channel. And I appreciate every time you watch, every time you comment, it really does mean a lot. And I'm glad we get to connect on that level. Tater Monkey, if you want a great multi attorney, look at the case. Tune into Reketa Law. Great live stream. Okay. You got you heard you guys heard it right here. Check it out. All right, cool. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like, the, the thumbs up button. It'll really help out the channel and the algorithm so I can get more people to watch the videos. Thank you guys so much. It's time for me to go. Uh, I'm going to be dropping another video tomorrow or the next day. And then definitely Friday night, Saturday night, we'll have the live stream um, for my patrons on Friday and probably the public on Saturday as long as nothing crazy happens. And you guys can expect the final Rittenhouse video after the verdict comes back. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Be safe out there. And until the next time, aloha.